Lord Jesus, as we come together now to be around your word and to hear you, would you pour out your spirit and give us yourself? We bless you and thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Children are welcome to go for time of formation. I think they'll be in that nice living room area today, to the left of there. I want to say, hey, welcome everyone. If you're back there in the sun, there is room up here in the shade, and there's absolutely no shame in getting up and moving up front. And um, if you're comfortable in the sun, that's great too. Just do whatever you need to do. This is the first time that we've shifted over here, so we're going to see what happens. We're going to see what happens as the sun moves across the sky and the tree and the shade. The tree's not going to move, I hope, as the shade moves with the sun. So just do what you need to do. So Amber, I'm also, I'm also delighted that Amber now has a chair, but it's a little intimidating. It's like a director's chair. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm up here expecting Amber at someone to go, cut! <laughs> no, 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 no. Start over. Take two. There are times in preaching where you actually kind of wish you could do that. Hopefully we won't have one of those today. So, hey, this morning I just want to say congratulations to everyone who has graduated lately. Yeah. I know, I know we've got some high school graduates this very weekend. Some folks graduated this very weekend among us. I know we have also we have those who graduated from this fine institution, which we're, you know, on, on whose campus we are um, in the past weeks as well. Cheryl and I, my son, he's recently uh, graduated from college at the age of 19. Ye gads. We're like, what on earth? You know, how did that happen? And next, <clears throat> not next week, but in a couple weeks, I'm, I'm going to quote from his senior paper. Not, not, because he's, uh, not because I'm a proud dad, though I am, but because he said some things worth saying. So I, I just, I'm so proud of that. I'm so excited about that. So we're in this time where a lot of us have graduated from something. In a sense, we think and we hope, and, and I think it seems to be true that we're sort of all graduating from COVID in a way, right? Let's hope that's really true and that really sticks and we're moving forward, and we're in a space where for some of you, you're like, oh, I am so glad to be back with people and back to normal. For some of us who are introverts, this is going to be a, take a little practice to get back in gear, right? Last week, we, Trinity, we as a church had, in a way, we had our own little graduation. Bishop was with us. We had said that the weeks leading up to Trinity Sunday, which is our name day, our name feast, the, the weeks leading up to that, we said it would be kind of preseason, and then Bishop would come and bless us, and we would officially, spiritually officially launch that day, so we did. So in a sense, that was a kind of a graduation for us. And we had that wonderful brunch up there in the lounge of the chapel, and people are sitting around, they're chatting, and I'm chatting with folks, and, and Cheryl had very kindly brought some food, and so I... I Finally worked my way over. I found the food. I was standing there. I ate my sandwich, my breakfast sandwich. And, and I'm done with my breakfast sandwich. And, and I'm looking down the rest of the, of the hallway there. And everybody's in conversation, which was fantastic. It was really, really good. But I'm standing there. And I've got my collar on. And I'm the lead pastor. I'm thinking, well, I should be talking to people. That's what I'm supposed to be doing, right? So I look over here. And you got all the teens and other young folks over here in this area. And one of them standing here, and so I, I said to her, I said, hey, what are you doing? And I just love, I absolutely love what she said back to me. She said, oh, I'm just standing here awkwardly. <laughs> and I said, I am so glad you said that, because that's exactly what I'm doing too. <laughs> and it's just so good to just name it. So we're all in this time, we're graduating, and we're going forward. And... Some things have changed, and some things we hope will be the same, and other things are in flux, and there's just a lot we just don't know. How do we find the way to live with confidence, with creativity, with joy, with love, with all those things that are the people in Jesus that we want to be? I've been in 2 Corinthians a lot during these past months of transition. You know what's amazing about 2 Corinthians? I think you can make the argument that the two key words of 2 Corinthians are weakness 
and confidence. I have a book that helps you learn biblical Greek vocabulary. And what they do is they take each book of the Bible and then they, they push forward, you know, these are the words that occur the most. You know, knocking out and and stuff like that. And these are the words that occur the most. To be weak, the verb. Weakness, adjective. Confidence. To boast, which Paul says in the letter, he boasts not in himself but in the Lord Jesus. These things are all in the top. This is one of Paul's most heartfelt, passionate letters. It's a place where Paul is wrestling with difficult things. And Paul is is, showing his heart. And the two main concepts that come forward are that of weakness and confidence. And isn't that a paradox? Isn't that a paradox? Who would ever put together weakness and confidence? And yet Paul does. And Paul lives in such a way that in the paradox of weakness and confidence is his strength. It's his sole freedom to live in this paradox. How does that work? It works because of one simple promise that changes everything. In our gospel lesson this morning, we heard the last things that Jesus says to his disciples in the gospel of Matthew before he ascends. Famous last words, right? Last words are important. My favorite last words thing comes from the Civil War where it's purported that one general rode forward to see the lines. And he's sitting on his horse and and, and a judent comes up to him and says, sir, I, I don't want to tell you what to do. But, you know, you're kind of close. And he says, oh, give me a break. They couldn't shoot up. (laughs) He got hit by a sniper and died mid-sentence. Anyway, okay, that was actually, (laughs) that was a joke. It's true, but that was a joke. Last words. Jesus gives these last words. And he's about to go up into heaven and be away from them. What he tells them there is important. Let's walk with three things that happen in that moment. The first one is they see him and they worship. They see him and they worship. St. John of Damascus, early Christian from around the 8th century, he said that God is not distant from us in space, but in nature. In other words, it isn't that God is far off and doesn't know and doesn't see and doesn't care. It's that God is different. My ways are not your ways, says the Lord. Jesus is God walking among us. He is with us. He joins into our nature. And so the appropriate response to Jesus is to fall down. Is to fall down. When we do this in worship, we're not saying, gimme, gimme, gimme. We're saying, I give you all of me. I surrender. I give you all of me. I offer all of me up to you. The appropriate response to, yes, the ascended Jesus, yes, the resurrected Jesus, also the cross of Jesus, and even Jesus as he just walked about being himself, is to fall down and worship. And they fall down. And when we fall down and worship Jesus and give ourselves completely, then we begin to find in that moment our true and authentic self. And the reason is because of what Jesus says first. He says, all authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me. And the reason all authority was given to him is from the same root of authentic, authority authentic. Jesus was the authentic human being. He was the human being without fissures inside, without breaks He was the human being who didn't categorize his life and be one thing to one people and something else to somebody else and have a different life going on here or things running through his mind that he'd be embarrassed for everybody else to know. 
Jesus is simply himself. And he is the authentic human being. How do we live into spiritual authority? Jesus says all authority on heaven and earth is given to him. Why? How do we live into spiritual authority? Jesus is given full authority because he gave himself fully. There's a kind of, a, there's a kind of an equation, if you will, a kind of a rule in the spiritual life that the spiritual authority that is available to us is commensurate with the degree of submission to God. The more of God we give ourselves, excuse me, the more of ourselves we give to God, the more just simply space there is, if you will, for spiritual authority to be real in us. In, in Genesis, at the fall, we're cast out of the garden, and the term dominion that was given to us in creation no longer is a happy word. Dominion then becomes, in the narrative of Scripture, dominion at that point becomes a word for tyrants and bullies and, and you know, empires that warp and kill and twist things. Dominion isn't restored to being a happy word until the person of Jesus, and the reason is because Jesus says, I come not to be served but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. And because Jesus gives himself fully, he is given full authority because he won't warp it. He won't use it for ill. He will use it. Jesus said, I do only what the Father in heaven tells me to do. So the way to spiritual authority is to first of all take dominion over my closest realm, which is myself, in the Spirit of God is to give myself fully and align myself fully with Jesus and his purposes. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added to you as well. So Jesus is worshiped. He's the authentic one who has all authority. And then he gives us the promise that allows us to live acknowledging our weakness and our vulnerability and yet living in the joy and the freedom of confidence in God. He says, behold, listen up everybody, this is important, behold, I am with you. Behold, I am with you. Friends, that's a mantra. Put it in your head. Repeat it to yourself. If I'm in my car and I'm driving to an appointment and I'm nervous about it and I don't know what's going to happen, behold, I am with you. If I've got to go face something pastoral and I don't know what, how bad the pain's going to be, a grievous situation, walking into a hospital room or whatever, behold, I am with you. I am with you. When I mess up, behold, I am with you, and that's a good thing. Jesus says, behold, I am with you always. We translate as even to the end of the age, which takes our mind to cataclysm because we've misread the book of Revelation. It can equally well be translated the completion of the age. Friends, there's work to do. In Jesus, there is work to do to bring the age into its fullness, to bring the creation into all that it was always meant to be. And yes, it'll be upon Jesus' return that things will be consummated and made fully whole, but there's work to do in the meantime that is blessed by him and with him and for him and that is establishing and manifesting his kingdom in the midst of life today. And he says, behold, as you go about that, I will be with you until the completion, the bringing to fulfillment of the age. And in that, whether our circumstances change or not, we have enough to carry on, to know our weakness and not need to cover it and fake it, and to live with confidence and joy as well. A couple of years ago, I, I had a call from Jennifer over at the college, and she said, hey, I've got a student here who needs to interview somebody for a ministry class. Would you be interested in chatting with her? I said, yeah, I'd love to chat with her. 
So I came over and, and I sat down with this young woman and she interviewed me and we had a great time. And I went home and I said to Cheryl, I said, I have just met the most remarkable young woman. And it had such a wonderful conversation. So as Trinity began, and as we've been thinking about how do we here in this place, how do we of almost all of us of majority ethnicity, how do we think about how to wrestle with one of the particularly challenging issues of our culture and our nation, our history and so on, around the racial and ethnic questions? How do we think about that? So I got in touch with Nick Rowe. I said, hey, Nick, would you know anybody who'd be brave enough and, and crazy enough to come be an intern with a new church and help us think about some of these things? And, and Nick said, yeah, I got somebody in mind. He said, why don't you chat with Fatu? So Fatu, come on up. I know you're, you're here. Yay, Fatu, woo! <laughs> so Fatu... And I got together and we chatted. And after we chatted, Fatu said, she said, do you remember a couple years ago? I said, oh, was that you? So Fatu and I, a couple months ago, we got together and chatted. And Fatu said, do you remember a couple years ago? I said, oh, was that you? And we had, a, Fatu was, you were very gracious with me to, uh, to, to forgive me that. Um, let's scoot this way a step to help them with the camera. All right, so this morning, so in our community conversations in June especially, we're going to be working directly with these questions around church and race and ethnicity and so on. But this morning, I want you guys to get to know Fatu as a sister in the Lord first. So thank you for being with us writ large, but also thank you for being with us this morning and being willing to share some of your story with us. So... Um, so, Fatu, you were, uh, you were not born in this country. You came to this country as a girl um, with your family. Where were you born, and, um, and when did you guys come here, and what was that like for you? Good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, I was originally born in Sierra Leone. Um, that's on the west side of Africa. I came to the States in 07. Um, actually, my dad came first in 1991. Mm -hmm. That was when the Civil War started in mm -hmm. Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. So he came here to get a job. And then later, my mother and one of my siblings came in 2000. And then myself and four of my other siblings came in 07. And then the rest of them came in 2012. <laughs> So I have five brothers um, and three sisters. So it's a pretty large family. Um, I was pretty young when I left Sierra Leone. So I don't really remember much of it. I mean, for most part of it, we were kind of underrun because of the Civil War. Um, so my memories are very vague yeah. um, before coming here. Yeah. Yeah. Must have been tough having your family separated, different ones coming in different times and going back and visiting and so on, all that stuff. That must have been tough. Yeah, it took me a while to get used to my birth mother mm -hmm. because I was raised by my aunt. Mm -hmm. So I used to call her mom mm -hmm. and my mom aunt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so when you guys were here and you got all together here, where were you? What city were you in? We moved to Philadelphia mm -hmm. and I've been in Philadelphia for the majority of time before moving to this New England area, um, Philadelphia was kind of rough moving in there at first because most of my family members were in Sierra Leone. So mm -hmm. that was kind of hard um, going to school where I didn't really speak the language. Mm -hmm. um, and it was pretty tough, you know? We used to get called like African booty scratcher and all of those other names. Mm -hmm. Um, you mean Philadelphia wasn't the city of brotherly love? No, no, no. <laughs> no, not at all. Oh, I'm um, sorry. And I was very troublesome, so I get into a lot of fights. <laughs> Back then, I mean, mm -hmm. somebody call you that name, you just want to punch mm -hmm. them in the face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but by the grace of God, <laughs> things change. <laughs> You're scaring us all. Glad you said that last bit. So, um... So I ima I'm just imagining, I don't know, I've never met your dad, but I'm a dad, and I have not as many children, but I have some kids, and so I'm imagining 
I'm just imagining, wow, how tough that must have been for him. And I'm imagining you'd probably have this sense of, I finally got my family back together. And then you made a big decision to come all the way up here to go to college. Um, what was that like for you? What was that like for, was that a big thing in your family that you were going to be moving to a different place? Uh, what was that like? Yeah, so my dad liked to keep all of us together because we've been separated for so long. So it was just like everyone is going to stay in Pennsylvania. No one is going to go anywhere. Your closest friend were your siblings, so you didn't need to go out and make new friends. Um, but then having been in Philadelphia for like nine years, I'm like, I need something new. <laughs> um, I love people and I like being around people. And I remember I was sharing with Pastor that um, being around other people and getting to meet different people allowed me to get to see a different side of who God is. And so I enjoyed doing that and I was pretty much tired of Philadelphia. Mm. I wanted something new and I also wanted to grow in my faith mm. um, because I think you're gonna ask me this question later so I probably shouldn't get into Go it. Go ahead. So, <laughs> so you come from a place where, so there's a swipe across Africa, right? At the, at the bottom of the Sahara, the Sahel and a little bit below it and then where Sub-Saharan Africa comes up and there's a, there's a swipe across there where mostly Muslim culture and mostly Christian and, and indigenous religion cultures are often in conflict. Um, and I remember you told me that, um, and, and I would guess, I'm just guessing that maybe that was in response to that. You told me there's a sense that um, some folks have that, hey, you know, Allah, Father God, it's the same. Let's just sort of keep it all from getting out of hand. So we sort of say it's all the same. And you, you were raised with a bit of that, but, um, but something happened for you where this Jesus who, for, before whom people fall down and worship became real to you. What was that like? Yes, so um, back in Sierra Leone, my aunt that I stayed with was Muslim. And so for us, it was like, you know, whether you worship Allah or you worship God, Christian, Muslim, we're all the same because we worship the same God. So that was kind of the understanding. Um, and the mox used to be right next to our house. So sometimes I'll go to the mox and be there because there's this understanding that it's the same God. So what's the problem? You know, go to church on Sunday, go to the mox on Friday, same thing. Um, and then moving here, I got into dance worship dance and also African contemporary dance. I, I saw you moving. You look like a dancer. <laughs> um, and so for me, it was through worship dance that I got to know more about God. Um, it was when I was dancing that I felt like, you know, the Holy Spirit was, was dancing with me and I was ministering to the Lord and through him. Um, and it was such a beautiful experience. I wanted to know more mm -hmm. about this God I was dancing to and with. Um, and so in high school, I went to an all girls high school in Philadelphia and it was a public school, Philadelphia High School for Girls. Um, and so it was doing high school, I wanted to learn more about God. And so in trying to find a college, I wanted a Christian college. Um, and I was tired of the city, so I wanted to be far away from the city and far away from my family. <laughs> I just wanted to get away. Um, and so I went online and I was like, Lord, lead me. And I'm online looking through schools and I came across Gordon College. Um, and, you know, I was like, well, God, show me where you want me to go. And I got accepted to like 19 schools because I applied to 19 colleges. <laughs> <laughs> and so I couldn't decide where I wanted to go. And I'm asking, Lord, you know, God, where do you want me to go? Um, I have all these opportunities. Where do you want me to go? And I remember I had a dream that I was at Gordon College. And the front entrance of the college was in my room and I've never, was in my dream. And I've never been to Gordon before. I've never been to this area before. 
And so by then I knew that this was where God wanted me to come, mm. you know, and it was very hard because like I said, my dad liked to keep all of us together. Mm-hmm. And my mentor at the time, she's like, you can't go to Gordon it's a private school and you can't afford it and blah, 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 you know? And so I spent a lot of time looking for scholarships and she's just like, you still can't go there. You can't afford it. And I'm like, watch me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And so after putting in my, you know, it's like, okay, I accept the school that I will go here. Um, I got home that day and I checked the mail and I received a scholarship that I did not apply for. Mm. You know, and I was like, look at God. Mm. Sometimes it's like God just needs us to take the first step. You know, he has already provided the way, you know, but if he gives you that thing, it's like, where is the faith in that? You know, so sometimes it's about taking that first step and then the Lord providing. And so that was how I ended up here. (laughs) My mentor did not like it. My parents did not like it, but it was like, God wanted me there. So I'm going to go there. I love it. I love it. So I want to, I want to back up and come back to that. Can I ask you? For somebody like me, help me imagine what is what is worship dance, and is this the thing that you do? Um, is this something you do in your own space, uh, as well as in worship spaces as well, or is this something you do in your own space? What was that like? Help help us uh, touch base a little bit with. Um, so I'm guessing dance for you is where you let go and reveal your deepest self, and Jesus came into your deepest self. Is that the kind of thing? And and. What happened next? Like, did you say, oh my word, that he's different or go talk to somebody or, or just kind of go, I don't know what to do with that or what? Yeah, so I used to dance in school. I was part of African club. So we did African dance and contemporarily, you know, all of those other types of dance. Um, and then this lady came to our church because, oh, so let me go back. <laughs> So because I love dance, I wanted to do dance in church. And so I decided to start a dance ministry at church. Um, Myself and one of the pastor's kids decided to start a dance ministry. I didn't know what I was doing. I've never like got classes in dance or anything. So it was all new to me. And then this lady came in she went to school for dance. And it was just so amazing. Been praying about this, and then here's this lady. And mm-hmm. so she kind of helped us, you know, in learning more about worship dance. And so, in like after school, we'll go to church, mm-hmm. and then we'll like you know practice the different um, moves and what they symbolize. Worshiping with the flags and the streamers and the tambourine. Um, and so it was through that. I remember one time we had practice. Um, for our youth Sunday and there was this song we were dancing to called Free Um, and so it was when we started dancing it was just like the Holy Spirit like just fell down Mm -hmm. and all of us it it was I can't even describe it (laughs) you know it was so beautiful in that Um, and I remember going home that day you know Mm -hmm. just praying to God you know and, and it was like this new revelation mm-hmm. been given to me. Um, you knew there's something real. He's yes. alive. He's here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes. And so by love then, it. it was just like, no, there is no same God between Muslim and mm. Christians. You know, it's like, no, it's just one God. It's Jesus. Um, yeah. Yes. And, and that's it. And yeah. I live in a household where we have Muslims in our house, you know, so we we have Christians, mind you, the idea was Christian, Muslim, same God. So mm-hmm. my brother was Muslim, and then and then you have me with this new revelation, like absolutely not different God. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was kind of hard yeah. growing up yeah. in that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I do worship dance, yeah. doing my devotional time nice. yeah. um, in church. It was yeah. kind of my way of expressing myself to yeah. God, you nice. know, the same way some people nice. do it through singing for yeah. me. It was yeah. dancing. Awesome. Yeah. So last question, we should wrap up. This is great fun. I'm enjoying this a lot, but but we should wrap it up. So last question, You're, you've come here and the Lord has provided for you. You're miraculously up here over at Gordon College. What's 
did it feel suddenly like, oh my goodness, what have I done? I'm on my own. What did you do in that moment? Yeah, my first year at Gordon was very hard. <laughs> you know, I did not know anyone coming to Gordon. It was just like, you know, God wants me here, so I'm going to go here. I don't really care what happens and blah, blah, blah. Um, but it was so hard because I grew up in the city where you literally walk down the street, there is like a corner store. You know, you go down the other side, there's a bus stop. And then here I am surrounded by majority white people and I didn't know what to do, you know? I felt so out of place. Uh, I felt like I didn't belong. I remember doing orientation. I looked around me <laughs> and there was only one other black person. And I'm like, God, are you sure this is where you want me? <laughs> and it was, it, was, it was very difficult, but I knew that's where God wanted me. Yeah. And he confirmed that every mm -hmm. time yeah. I was in doubt. It, yeah. He was like, this is where I want you. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. just learning to work around that and mm -hmm. adjust to that. But mm -hmm. God has been faithful, you know. Mm -hmm. And now here I am at an even yeah. wider school. It's just <laughs> like, <laughs> God, what are we doing? <laughs> you know. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think that. God brings me in places like this to, mm. to build bridges, you mm. know, to, mm. to be mm. that in between, mm. you know. Um, mm. And I did a lot of that at Gordon. And so mm. I'm really excited to be here, mm. to be doing mm. this with yeah. you all, you know, Great. because if people like us are not in these spaces, like we'll always stay separated mm. and segregated, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I'm happy to be here, even yeah. though it can be awkward. Mm -hmm. That's okay, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Good. Thank you. Thanks so much for being with us. And thank you for sharing your story with, with all of us. So thank you. Thank May you. I pray for you? Yes. Yeah. Lord, I thank you for Fatu. I thank you for bringing her to the North Shore and for meeting her all along the way. I thank you, Lord, for meeting her deep in her own heart as she opened herself up to you in dance and you came into that space. And thank you, Jesus, for her testimony and her story. And Lord, each one of us now, we want to pray together, Lord. We want, to, we want in our own hearts to worship you. We offer up to you all that we are. We pray acknowledge that you, O oh Lord, have authority because you deserve it and you can handle it. You use it for healing and wholeness. And Lord, we want to say thank you that you are with us. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you.